Hello and welcome to this new series. I'm calling this new series Fledgling Wine Baron. Basically we have just won an auction to buy some well to put to buy some well an extensive lot of land actually. It runs along the western side of this map. It's just give you a show. So basically all this area here, the only area that is developed is this little area over here. And this is the farm farmyard over there. We do also own the land that the town is based on that we are at now. Though we don't obviously own the buildings on there, we just own the land. It doesn't bring any income in, but of course if we want to make additions, there are a couple of places where we can build things if we need to. This is all pretty much hilly, well very hilly country, forests all around the edge. But essentially our operation is going to revolve around here to start with, to try and get our wine business on the go. Right, let's get up there and I'll show you what we bought. Right, let's get into our brand new. I did buy this before I went into the auction. We've still got 600,000 euros left. Um, we spent just over 2 million buying the, the property. And just jump into the beast. And we'll drive up to the to the farm and um, yeah you can have a gander at what we bought it was bought from a liquidation estate so somebody has given this a go before um, they didn't even get down to putting down the vines before they ran out of money so I'm not sure that we'll be able to get a full vineyard going with the money that we've got just left to plant vines. While I'm just talking all this area up to here, we own. We don't own any of the lands, they were sold off separately. It's a very rugged area, very underdeveloped. Inside the little town area is not much as a couple of fields dotted around, a couple of small small holdings, but most of the area is so hilly that it's pretty difficult to farm. The infrastructure of the of the map besides the little town area that we're in is virtually non-existent until you get up to the area that we've bought. There's a rectangular circular road <laughs> if you get what I mean running through the center of the map that provides the road transport or the road links. And this is kind of what we've bought. So we've got two grass fields which we'll be using for planting our, um, our vines. We've got the main farm here. There are collectibles on the map. Um, we won't be looking for them, but if we do get them, we'll collect them. Well, they're worth 10 grand. I didn't realize that. Don't know how many there are. Can't be that many then if they're worth 10 grand. This is the, the main entrance into the yard. This little courtyard here. Pretty under, underdeveloped. This is our... Um, it's the area that um, was used as the living quarters, been opened up slightly. Um, the rest is still all pretty boarded up, so we can't really use those buildings. And then if we drive through this archway, get into slightly more modern stuff. Got a shed with uh, some equipment in it. But uh, two 
grape harvesters got a Lamborghini tractor R 250 I think it is got the little Fent uh, vineyard tractor and the grape trailer and then various other vineyard paraphernalia got the uh, got the pruners white and red grapes fertilizer plow mulcher front end loader yes yeah, so we've got a reasonable deal for over just over two million considering all the land we've got although how are we going to work on that land i don't know well we'll see as we go along try and work things out for that whether it's all, I doubt whether it'll all go to grapes we might be doing other other operations on there with depending on what we can in the landscape right so we've got some grass equipment the idea was that we plant grass in between the well we put the, the vineyards onto a, onto a grass field and then we'll have grass in between to bind the bind the field together or the, or the ground together because of well to minimize soil erosion but we'll show you that when we get there this is specifically for grapes and olives I'm not sure whether olive will be doing olives I don't think the area is quite suited to olives we might give it a go and see if it grows or not and we've got a couple of silos here These, this is a um, sale point so basically we can sell our product into here and this is a buying point we can buy all the necessary all the necessary um, supplies that we need for our operation because it's such a, a well I don't want to call it the derelict but uh, untapped area we need to get it all delivered in and that's kind of where the shop delivers it to and we just buy it from there as and when necessary a workshop and then across the road we've got we go from sort of pretty old to very new so this is what i think really put them under they built this brand new winery brand spanking new lovely busy being commissioned at the moment well restarted up they might bold it while we while they're waiting to sell it grapes go in there come out the side here got a bit of an entertainment area at the top there for wine tastings We'll get to that a bit later once we've got wine to taste. <laughs> um, and yeah, nice sort of access. Let's jump in quickly and we'll just show you around the inside. So the grapes come in here. Get sorted, all the all the bad ones get taken out and then it, and then it goes into the crusher yeah. and then of course the the wine goes into gets mixed with water and this is the water tanker here which we fill, the, the filling point is outside goes into the fermenters yeah. So it's quite a few fermenters and then from there to the holding tanks bottling tank if you want to call it that bottling area we we have two lines running in there one doing grape juice one doing wine and this is the bottling plant and it comes out here we were shown it in operation 
during the viewing day, so we do know that it works. The only thing I don't really like, and um, and goodness, the area is not under real health and safety regulations, is the <laughs> all the pipes lying around here. But because it's a fairly automated transaction, there's not many people in there, so... Staff, staff is limited. Right, so I think with further, without further ado, let's go and get started. So let's go and park this up. We'll plant as many vines as we can. We might have to get some loans eventually. But of course, at the end of the day, we want to make a return on our two million investment. So. got to start producing as much as we can. This probably will m make use of loans. Right, I'm just going to park this up here and then uh, jump into the to the Lamborghini. I don't know why they chose a Lamborghini. Nice track to that. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put on the grass equipment so that I can measure the distance between the vines. So it's not going to be optimal planting, but because of the hilliness of the land, we have to be cognizant of the, the potential for soil erosion. So if we just have open soil every time it rains or when we're watering, We'll just run off and we'll get terrible soil erosion. So I think that the just open that. I think that that is going to be slightly wider than the than the um, in the mower which we got in the front. So what we're going to do is we will mow in between the, wood, the, the vines and we will um, make hay and then sell it. Just as a bit of extra income. Uh, where are we now? What do we want to do? Oh, I just want to do beyond there. I just want to see what we use for the measuring. Yes, yeah, so we need to measure the, the back. That's the uh, tether. So let's just park off the the um, mower. We don't have to traipse around with that on. Just put it in front of the baler. Right. Okay, let's get going. Let's get planting. See how much we can do before we have to go to the bank. Cap in hand. Right, so oh, just before we do that, let's just take you around the field so we can show you the scope of the field. It's a bit of a track going down this side here. This is the this field is the biggest of the two. So luckily they had planted grass. The previous people had planted grass, so they were working. I kind of I kind of think that they started at the wrong time. I think I've bought just at the right time because we can start planting now, in March. Right, so that's pretty much the scope. You can see the the hills, the slope. And although it's only this bottom area that is really severely sloped, it's very difficult to walk, work sideways. So quite often I would plant sideways on a slope that steep. So across the across the the hill but the equipment struggles to to work on that on that angle so we've got that side there and we've got that side there once we get to the top here it's fairly fat it's it's undulating slightly but it's not too bad but 
we do need to make use of as much land as possible. So we're going to plant from this bit in the top down the bottom. And that's the reason we're planting on grass is to make sure that the area between the vines doesn't um, doesn't erode basically. So if we put that there and we can get a starting point for the vine. Right, so let's jump out. Plant the first lo load of vines. I don't know how much each row is going to cost, but it's not going to be cheap. So productions, greenhouses, uh, not greenhouses. Productions, orchards. And we'll start with the red wine. This this first field here will pretty much be our red wine field. Okay, so we'll give it a bit of space. Here we go. And we'll start not right from the top, just so there's a bit of working room at the top. Start about there. And then we'll run down. So I'm not sure whether we'll have to prune this here. I don't think we'll need to prune. Because we've just planted. This has a bit of working space at the bottom. It's a bit difficult to tell how straight it is, but... Twenty-seven thousand. Let's see how many we can get going. Right. So this is going to be quite a long process. Do that on a time lapse. Get back to you once it's done. Oh, just do this next one first. Right, so we pretty much heard the... We'll try and get... That's good. Put another lot in. So they do, do use different equipment, the red and wine grapes. So that's why I'm not going to mix them together. Give ourselves a bit of space there. We haven't got it selected, have we? Try and keep them as straight as possible. about right. Right, we'll see it once it's done.
Right, you're back with me. I'm going to try something else here. You can see I just drove down the centre there because it um, didn't quite go straight. So I'm going to I'm going to go and lease another tether. I'm going to put it back on the back of the small tractor. It'll still give us the right width. So let's just go in and look at tethers. Where are they now? There we go. What's this one here? And we'll just lease it for a short period of time. We don't need to buy it. It's a bit of an extra expense, but I think it'd be worthwhile at the end of the day. So, here we go. It's going to cost 357 plus a bit extra because it takes a little while to do the job. Right, let's just trot back into the farm. Luckily the field is very close. <laughs> should have been delivered by the, sh by the shop to, the, to here. It should be in the middle here somewhere. Yep, there they go. They dropped it off already. I hope this thing's strong enough to pick it up without a weight or anything. Shouldn't be that heavy. Yeah, not a problem. Not a problem. Right, now we know the last one was cute, so <laughs> we'll just give ourselves a little bit of extra space. You can see how it narrows down there. Well, I suppose, you know, as long as it's Give it just a little bit of extra space down here. Right, let's get back to the top.
Well, you're back with me now. We're just about there. It's been a long and laborious process. A couple of mistakes made along the way. I have shown the process on the um, time lapse just so that you can get an idea of the scale of everything. And immediately we've got a problem. Why is that not? I thought I thought I'd check to see because normally I try and get get it as close to the collision point as possible. So it did somehow round about there it creates a problem. I'm not sure what that's about. In any case we'll just move it out a little bit. We've had occasional problems where we've had, I think I've had this once before somewhere. Not quite sure where it was, but that's looking better. I think we'll be able to get another, another row in. I'd say, there we go. Well, yeah, I don't suppose they're 100% straight, but they there or thereabouts. The other problem is that I think there may be a sneaky white wine in here somewhere. We'll, <laughs> we'll find out soon enough. Um, not too worried about it because I haven't used white wine before so um, or white grape should I say. Um, so I'm not too fast if it does come about because we'll be able to just do a bit of an experiment to see whether it actually produces in the same winery. Eventually I'd like to buy two, a new winery or a second winery so that I can hopefully we'll be producing enough to keep two wineries, at least two wineries, fully produced somewhere along the line. Fully producing should I say. Right, I think this will be the last one. And yeah, we will have, I've been cognizant of the fact of trying to remember that I need to keep a bit of working capital because it'll be a couple of months before we can start getting income. We might be able to get some income as the grass grows, so I'm sure we'll be able to take grass off before the, before the first harvest, so Yeah, it's been uh, pretty much everyone I've done I've got too close to well too close to the track that I would think and it creates a collision but that's also been a good reference point so that I know if I get close well if I, I know that if I know where the Where the collision point is, then we're reasonably straight, and also we've kind of semi maximized the space available. Right, there we go, that's that done. Let's just get the other little tractor back up here. We can get the Um, Ted returned. It's done its job for now. Got 142 working capital, 142,000 euros working capital. That's good enough, I think. Famous last words, of course. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll just get this back to the farm and so that it can be collected. Then we'll do a little bit of a flyover to 
Let's do get a look of what the field looks like. And in the next episode we'll start working it. Get that returned. There we go, get this all parked up. Then we'll go and fetch the other tractor and see so we'll just do a bit of a flyover so you can see what it looks like. on back down to the field. See when when we're back at the tractor. Right. Just hope out. And we'll have a look. Right, there we go. That's pretty much what the field looks like. There's a bit of a gap down there. It's reasonably straight. You can see that one where we got a bit narrow down at the bottom there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 rows, some longer than others. And just looking back at the arm as well. Right, and on that note, I think that's where we're going to end this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the start to this new series. Just pan around there, we'll get the idea of what the white grape field is going to look like. Once again, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Cheerio.